Dear viewers, you are just in time for CA Bread Connect. We are indeed grateful that you found time to follow us and therefore we just want to pray that this time of looking up on God will also be a blessing to your life. We want to start off and as it has been our routine, we are bringing in the worship team to guide us through a session of praising God and then later on we'll have a time to just hear what God has prepared through the man of God who will be sharing his testimony today and therefore allow me to pray with us even as we are starting. Father we bless you again indeed you are a good God and this is your day the day that you have made and Lord even as we participate in the blessings that you have in the day we want to pray that we will draw from your presence whatever you want to minister through this session Lord do it for your own glory we bless the worship team as they are leading us through this session. We pray that they will be able to communicate your purposes even through songs. Thank you, Lord, for our viewers, wherever they are. We speak a blessing over them. We want to speak that they will be uh, ready to hear what you want to say, even to transform their lives. We bless them. Thank you, Lord, for the man of God that will be coming to share his testimony. We want to pray a blessing over him that will communicate your purposes clearly to your people. We bless you and honor you in Jesus name we pray. Father, pray. The Bible says that go ye to the world and make disciples. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Come on just put your hands together for the Lord. Hey. Taifa mbali mbali leo Nita tangaza neno lake bwana kwa mataifa mbali mbali leo
Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. And Jesus came for somebody like us. He came for you. He came for me. He died at the cross for you and me. Father, we bless your name. Lord, you came for me. You came for me and you pour out your, you pour out your love for us, Lord. You died at the cross. And we bless your name. And we give you the praise.
have shed your blood for us to be free. You have redeemed us from the scars of the law. You have given us life and love in abundance, Lord. And we appreciate you, Lord, for your goodness and your love. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Give you praise, Lord. It has been a great time hearing, uh, just being in your presence, Lord, through songs and worship and waiting upon you. We thank you, Lord, for, for that time, Lord. It has just been awesome, Lord, to be guided by the great team of singers, Lord. We speak a blessing over them, Lord. We just want to bless you. You are a good God. Take the glory and honor in Jesus' name. Many thanks, worship team, for that time of honoring the Lord through songs. It was indeed a blessing that God prepared you for this time. The Lord bless you. And for your online viewers, may I invite, invite you to join us now, even as we hear what God has prepared today through testimonies. The Lord bless you. Dear viewers, it's a great pleasure to have your company on CA. We are really excited that you are following us from wherever you are. Uh, somebody wrote and said that within every person, there is a desire to be distinctive, to grow beyond average level. What they meant by that is that at some times we might feel like we have setbacks, but deep inside, everybody would wish that they would, if it was possible, they, they may rise from their rock bottom level and go up there. And uh, that's why through these testimonial uh, sessions that we've been having over the last few weeks, we thought of doing this so that you out there and many other people who are within the reach of this uh, program can be encouraged by the lives of people that we bring here. They have been through life and through their life, God has been good enough just to bring out a picture of somebody that people can look up to. And today we are excited that in this program we have one of our pastors. He has a story in life and we believe that his story will be an encouragement to you. And therefore, Pastor Kipro, we are really excited that you've come to this program to encourage our viewers. 
Thank you, Elder Philip. Do you think that, uh, that uh, it's exciting to be here? Yes, of course, it's exciting because, uh, you know, life is a story. Yes. And uh, life, uh, you know, is the story of God, yes. you know. As Jeremiah was told by God, I knew you before you were formed. Yes. And uh, when we look back into the life of Jeremiah, yes. what he went through, yes. what he, 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 he went through and the experiences he had yes. and what he said, all those things form part of the encouragement that we get today. Wow. Yes. Quite uh, informative and uh, profound. Mm. We are just looking at Pastor Kiprop. Yes. You normally stand in front of an audience and when people see you up there, and they are back in the pew. They are looking at a pastor and they are saying, these guys have lived a perfect life. Mm. They have lived a perfect life. They have not gone through problems. They don't know life on this other end of the world. And that's why God is using them up there. That is true about your life. <laughs> no, it's not true, really. Yes. That, that's not true. Mm. You know... Unless you you live in in you know in you, you unless you are in in a fantasy you know, yes. but life actually is as both the the good times and it has got uh, both the the, the hard times, yes. and, and that's true really. And uh, that there are moments of mm. great joy. Yes. I've had moments of great deep deep difficulty. Yes. A moment where really you lose weight. Yes. <laughs> a moment yes. where you meet your friends and they say, what happened to you? Yes. Uh, it's just because you went through a difficult moment. Wow. And um, in all these things, really, wow. uh, we can look back and say all these were the, make, the making and the doings of God. Yes. So it has not been easy in life, really. It yes. has not been easy for yes. me to be what I am today. Yes. Uh, I can say like Paul, I am who I am and what I am by the grace of wow. God. Wow. It has really taken God. Wow. So to just to say, oh, it's like uh, I've always enjoyed life. Mm. That's not true and very far from the truth. Wow. <laughs> yes. Now, if you're talking about Pastor Kipro, yes. how would you describe yourself? Who is Pastor Kipro? <laughs> hey, that's an interesting one. Yes. Now, I don't know how I can describe myself. Yes. Uh, let me just say, uh, one is that I am one kind of person that likes being genuine. Yes. I just want to be as natural as I am. Yes. And I like natural things. Yes. Uh, I don't believe that uh, we should fake our lives. We should just be as open and real. Yes. Uh, if we are struggling with something, Let's just say I'm struggling with something. Yes. Uh, if, for example, you you know, uh, this is not your in thing. You mm. don't like you're not good in that. Yes. You, there's no need of fake faking it. You yes. know, if you are struggling with in an area, I I find that being authentic to me is is the real thing. Wow. That's why I don't like like for example watching, um, uh, you know, some of the movies. Because some of these movies are actually stories. They are not reality. Yes. So why should I spend my time yes. just looking at things which someone is making up? Wow. You know, I would really listen to documentaries. Yes. I would really listen to real life issues and real life stories. Mm. Those are the things that really make me tick. Wow. So I, I, I really like being genuine. I really like being genuine. Wow. And yeah, because... I, to me, I find that you are not truthful to yourself yes. to just uh, to just not be real. Mm. To just not be real is not yes. is not right, really. Wow. Like you know, it does not make sense, really, mm. to imagine that I am an American today. Wow. I'll be fooling myself, and why should I even? Exactly. <laughs> you know. So I really like just being the me. Mm. I just really like being. Uh, the person whom God has made me. Wow, wow. Yes. Now, today we are talking to Pastor Patrick, a pastor. Mm -hmm. Where did this uh, journey start? Wow. Where it all started? Yes. <laughs> well, maybe to my viewers, uh, 
it's I think it's important for you to know that I, I never grew up in a Christian family. Yes, you did it. I I, I never really. Wow. I, I never, mm. and uh, I even never even went to Sunday school. Really, I I don't know that. Yes. Uh, such things like Sunday school and all the other things, mm. and uh, in, in my home. Uh, we were not born again, mm. and uh, I was raised by a, a single mother, mm. and uh, I'm I'm always proud of that because you know, uh, my mom really did a good job. Wow. As much as she was not born again, mm. and uh, she never knew the Lord, mm. but she did all the best in just trying to make us good people wow. and uh, be people who can who can who can be meaningful in life. Mm. So one of the things like really my mom really, uh, you know, uh, imparted me with was the things of being responsible. Yes. Hey, you really have to be responsible. If you are left at home, you really have to, to make sure that everything is in place, everything is in order, mm. everything is in its rightful position. Wow. Responsibility was key. Mm. And uh, that's one thing I found to be really important in life. Yes that uh, you you become a very responsible person mm. so i was not i was i did come up from a christian family yes. uh so when uh I, I i i i you know when i grew up i never knew the lord mm. until one day yes. until one day when uh my sister our elder sister at home got yes. saved mm. uh, when she had gone to college yes. and uh, she came back home to the village and uh, told me about salvation. Yes. And to me, that was an amazing thing. I'd never thought of salvation that way. Mm. Uh, my understanding of salvation then, mm. really, my understanding that mm. I had about salvation was that uh, if someone would be baptized, yes. and I got this from, my, uh, uh, from, from, from uh, a priest who used to come to a primary school, yes. because we had a, a Catholic priest who would come to school, and uh, she would have time with the with the pupils, yes. and uh, so I got to know, mm. uh, to to imagine, and to to have a notion that uh, yes. for anybody to go to heaven, mm. then you've got to be baptized. Yes. And uh, I remember uh, really at one time mm. uh, during one of the sessions, the priest had come to school, yes. and I asked him to give me the Catholic Catechism, yes. you know, the small book. Yes which you, you have to go through it and to memorize several other things yes. uh, as, as it is being done by the Catholics. Yes. And so my intention was really mm. that uh, suppose I go through that uh, material yes. and they used to come once a month. Mm. So I, I just said, okay, by the time he, ca he will be back, I will have memorized and probably go to a Catholic church around yes. and be baptized and that is how I would be saved. So that was my understanding of salvation. Yes. Uh, but unfortunately, you know, that, that material was being sold. I remember it was around shilling, one shilling yes. those days. Mm. So I didn't have that money definitely. And so my intention was actually to, I remember I, I took it from him and asked him that the, the next time he, he comes, I will pay. And so my intention actually, as I told you, was just to memorize for the whole month when he comes, I get take the book back to him and tell him I did not memorize I, I, I didn't get money so please just have your book yes. but I already have memorized <laughs> so it was a difficult thing yes. and as you know definitely one month came mm. and uh, I had not memorized mm. and so I was so frustrated really yes. I said now I'll go to hell mm. <laughs> now that I've, been, I've not memorized yes. it means I will not be baptized mm. and if I'm not baptized definitely now I'm going to hell so when my sister comes home and mm. speaks to me mm. about the word and salvation through Jesus Christ, only through faith, by just believing in Christ, yes. accepting and repenting, and uh, it's a gift of God. Mm. It's not by our own works or our own effort as such. Yes. You know, to me, it was so simple, mm. and it's something I've been looking for, yes. yearning for in my heart, yes. though secretly, but I didn't know the way. So I gave my life to Christ that day, mm. 
And my sister went back to Nairobi. She was at Kenya. Uh, she was doing. Uh, uh, she was doing uh, uh, courses in nursing. In 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 is it in 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 Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, so when she left, uh, she, when she went to Nairobi, she she left some information with a lady in a village who had actually uh, uh, who had just finished campus those days, and uh, she was uh, probably the only person who had gone to the university around. And so she was somebody who uh, was actually someone to be emulated. Mm. So uh, my sister tells this lady that, oh, Patrick gave uh, his life to Christ. Yes. So please go and visit uh, and, 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 and encourage him. So this lady comes home and tells me, oh, I heard that you've given your life to Christ. Yes. And I told her, what? Who told you this? Mm. Because to me, salvation was a personal thing. Then who takes a private thing to other people? Mm. And she tells me, oh, my sister told, you, uh, told me that uh, uh, you gave your life to Christ and she was so excited that now I'm born again. But to me, I was not amused really. Yes. <laughs> why, why? This is not, this is a private thing. Yes. Why is it now in the village that mm. what I did privately, actually I did it at home. Yes. Why is it that now the same thing is being taken out to the village? Yes. But this lady was just very excited that mm. I had given my life to Christ. Mm. And so she asks me to, uh, to join them yes. uh, in a Christian union, which she had just begun yes. in our primary school. Mm. Now that she had finished campus and now she was around in the village, she talked uh, with the administration that she wanted to begin a Christian union in our primary school. Mm. So, and the, 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 the sessions were happening on, mm. uh, on Wednesdays. Yes. And so she invites me to, the, to that particular uh, service on Wednesday. Yes. And uh, the first Sunday, the first week, definitely I did not go. And I was in primary school. Yes. I think that that's important. I was still in primary school, so uh, so I did. So she invites me to join the the, the 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 Christian Union meeting in my primary school. So I did uh, because one, uh, I just said, "Oh, I think it's good for me to join. Yes. Just visit and see what's going on there." Mm -hmm. So I think that was actually my first, really, yes. probably uh, service I ever attended. Yes. That was now in my primary school. And the other thing she asked me was, I want you to give a testimony yes. that you have given your life to Christ. Yes. And I said, wow. man, mm. now this lady is taking this thing too far. Yes. Because initially I was not amused that mm. she got to know that I was born yes. again. And now she's asking me to share the same mm. with the rest of the students, the yes. pupils actually. So I didn't want to disappoint her. I told her, yes, I will give my testimony. Mm. But uh, of course, I had my own tricks. I said, ah, they are not, definitely, I, she will not force me to start. Yes. So I went there and I saw what they were doing and they asked for people to give testimonies, mm. but I just kept quiet. Yes. And I was just seated behind there. And after that particular meeting that day, the lady comes to me and she tells me, Patrick, why, why is it that you did not... Uh, do as we had agreed that you will share your testimony. Mm. You know, I, I, I just made a story and I told her, you know, I wanted to stand, but the programmer said, ah, it's, it's now time out. Mm. And definitely I was lying. Mm. But uh, she told me, you must give your testimony this coming Wednesday. Yes. I told her, fine, I'll do that. Come Wednesday, mm. the following Wednesday. And I just said, oh, I don't want to disappoint this lady. Yes. But I said, I will not give because definitely I didn't believe. Why should I share my testimony with other people? Yes. So I went to the meeting, sat behind as I did last week. Mm. And, uh, and now the time, there were some songs and, and the programmer lady said, okay, it's now time for testimonies. Yes. And uh, she said, I remember it was a lady, she said, oh, now before we give every other person to, 
to give a testimony, there is someone here who was asked to give a testimony. And to me, that was a big relief. Because I have a reason to explain to this lady now that, oh, you know, the programmer, there were people who had asked for time for testimonies, yes. but not me. Yes. But Elder Philip, yes. to my amazement, mm. I just heard the programmer say, mm. uh, we have Patrick asking for a testimony. Yes. Oh, my. I could not believe. Wow. Me? So I, I wondered, who, who did this? Yes. And, uh, you know, I just thought, I was quiet, really. Mm. And the whole auditorium was quiet. Yes. Because people knew me and they were, everybody was now wondering, really? Yes. <laughs> you mean he's also born again? Yes. I kept quiet and I was thinking, should I walk out and go completely never to be seen in this meeting again? Mm. I said that would be, like, really rude. I said, should I continue keeping quiet and be seated? Mm. And everybody turned to see where I was. Mm. You know, I was so embarrassed. I could not know. I did not know what to do, really. Mm. And then what I only remember is that I stood and went in front. Yes. And uh, Philip, you know, this is now my second day or time, really, yes. in a Christian meeting. Yes. <laughs> so I was wondering, wow. what will I now do? Wow. But I remembered in the previous meeting I was in, wow. mm. people would just say, praise the Lord. Mm. And everybody would say, amen. Mm. Praise the Lord. Wow. Amen. Mm. And uh, because of time, really, yes. that's so important to me. That's wow. how I came into the ministry. Wow. So I want to share that. Exactly. Exactly. I said, praise the Lord, amen, mm. praise the Lord. Mm. You know, I would not say anything. Mm. I, I remember I said, not less than seven, praise the Lord. When, they, when, they, when I say praise the Lord, they say amen, and, mm. and, and they, are, they are all quiet. You know, I, I lack words to say, I, and I say another, praise the Lord. Yes. They say amen, I'm so quiet, you know, wow. that they are quiet, I begin shaking. Mm. I was literally shaking, really. But God is faithful. Wow. After saying and getting stuck for a long some, so some time, mm. I began to speak. Wow. And what I said, I don't know to this day. Mm. But what I know mm. is that that meeting was, was at around 3.45. Yes. Just after games, uh, when we had come in for games time. Yes. But I spoke until 6.30 in the evening. Wow. Wow. There was no more programmer. No more preacher, no other person. Wow. I spoke, but at the end, I asked people how many want to give their life to Christ. And mm. the old school wow. just lifted up their hands and I prayed wow. for them. Wow. And that is where wow. my first testimony became my first preaching. Wow. And I was set on fire. Wow. From that very day, we began going from one house to the other every day in the evening, even in class when the teachers are not in, mm. I'm there in front preaching. Wow. So my first testimony became Your first <laughs> my first preaching. Wow. And I've been in the ministry ever since. Wow. Yes. You went through high school knowing that you had been called in ministry? Yes, actually. I, I knew because that I, I was in primary school then. Yes. So I went to high school. I was really on fire. Yes. Really on fire. The very first thing, the first time I went to the Christian Union, I was on fire. Yes. And immediately I was made the Christian Union chairman. Wow. And I actually became a Christian Union chairman immediately in my primary school. Yes. Yes. And in wow. high school, I became the Christian Union chairman mm. and uh, uh, all along at that time. Now, after your high school, mm -hmm. you want to go to university, to college, and uh, you're grappling about the career that you want to take in life. Mm -hmm. Did you ever think about something else beside pastoral work? Well, I did not think really yes. of pastoral work, but I thought of ministry work. Yes. 
Uh, to me, because well, after getting saved, I had a lot of problems with the local church I went mm. because it was not a Pentecostal, but yes. my orientation mm. was Pentecostal, actually, yes. though I had never met Pentecostals. Yes. So, uh, I, and I did not like the way the pastors were treating us, yes. really. So, I, I had a negative uh, attitude towards pastoral, yes. but I was really excited about doing the work of God. Yes. So, I was excited about about working in the ministry. Yes. So um, in high school also, we did an amazing work by the grace of God. Mm. And so I was in the ministry. Yes. I was involved with other evangelistic ministries while yes. I was in high school. Mm. And so uh, definitely I just knew that out of high school and I go out to serve the Lord. Wow. So that was my really, uh, that was my desire. Mm. But of course I had a lot of worries. Yes. Uh, one is how would I even break it out to my relatives or mm. my parents and my siblings yes. that I want to be in the ministry yes. but because that was not what they would want. Yes. yes. Now the decision finally came. You mm. found yourself in ministry. Yes. I don't know whether this was happening when you had settled down in marriage or at what point did you now decide that you're going into full-time ministry? So from high school, I, I actually did not continue to... Uh, to the university, yes. uh, though I had the grades, mm. and uh, but I went straight to to work with an evangelistic ministry. Yes. So uh, I worked with an evangelistic ministry here in Kenya, yes. and where I, we preached in the various places yes. in this country, various places wow. in this country. Uh, we went to other countries as well. We yes. went to India and wow. preached there in Mumbai and in, wow. Ch in Chennai. Wow. And um, so, and so I was the missions coordinator. I mm. worked with different pastors in yes. the different towns. Mm. I would go make plans and and, and arrangements to have a citywide crusade wow. with the pastors. Mm. So, um, so that is exactly what I did. Middle after high school, I went there. Went I was not married. Mm. I was not married because, yes. well, I was just in ministry. Yes. So. Um, so I got married later on. Yes. yes. And your wife found you in ministry. Yes, actually it just happens that not that my fine my wife found me in ministry. Yes. My wife and I yeah. uh, were uh, chair Christian Union chairpersons in the nearby schools. Yes. <laughs> so in high school. Yes. So I knew her yes. and she also finished high school and we joined together and worked uh, in the same evangelistic ministry. Yes. So both of us were in the ministry. Wow. Yes. Wow. You know, I'm asking that because I wanted to know how today you are able to balance ministry work and family. It's actually proved to be a challenge, you know. There are people who grapple, you know, serving in ministry and balancing ministry work, which is demanding, and family at the same time. You didn't find that a challenge? No, it was not a challenge, but to right now, it's not a challenge. One, it's mm. because uh, I don't have a problem with my spouse, mm. my wife. Yes. Uh, but the, the challenge would be now, it's a responsibility yes. that I have as a minister now, mm. is that I should really make sure that uh, uh, I put effort, I, I, I create time for my family. Yes. And uh, so, because I find that now to be... A responsibility yes not even as a challenge mm. but as something that i must do yes yes mm. and so, you're able to balance between yes. you know ministry is demanding you know that mm -hmm. as a pastor mm -hmm. that sometimes you might find yourself so much into the lives of other people and we left with very very little time for your own family <laughs> yes, actually. Yes. You know, you can win the whole world and lose your own family. Yes. So one one thing really is that I have to create time. Like if immediately I get out of church, yes, I never stop anywhere. That yes. has been my tradition. Mm. If I'm not in church, I am at home. Mm. And when I am at home, I must make sure that I give time to my family, yes. to parenting as such. Mm. So parenting is a is a great responsibility. Yes. So you, you really have to uh, make up your mind. Mm. And uh, as much as you find ministry to be important, mm. you should really know that mm. your family is so important. Yes. And especially 
a peaceful uh, environment in mm -hmm. your in your family is is really key. Wow. Because that's that's where you are, mm. and uh, you know, th those are your people. Yes. Those are your people. Yes. You know when 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 someone dies, let's say you die uh, while you are somewhere abroad, mm. they will not be asking who, who are who are his churchmates. They will ask who are his family members. Yes. So your family is number one. Number one. Yes. Now just on what you've said that you have, you are either in church doing ministry work or with your family. Mm -hmm. You know, the assumption out there is that pastoral life is a very, very lonely and secluded life. You know, these people don't go for parties. They don't go in joints. You know, when men are going in joints, okay. you are not there. You don't, you know, appear to celebrate a football club. Wow. Yeah. Is that true of a pastor? Not really. You know, Yes. David said, when will that day be? Mm. Will that day come yes. when we shall all go into the house of the Lord? Yes. And David said, you know, uh, in the presence of the Lord, there are pleasures forevermore. Yes. Truly, mm. truly, mm. our joy, our peace and our pleasure yes. is found in the presence of God. Wow. So, uh, well, we may have some other celebrations here and there mm. but there is no joy there is no peace there is no fulfillment that yes. i personally really get yes. other than being in the presence of god wow. and doing that which god wow. uh, expects me to do wow. that's great joy wow. that's great peace wow. peace that cannot be explained wow. yes there are young people and young pastors young people want to go into pastoral mm -hmm. work and uh, they are looking at your life and uh, they are saying that we admire Pastor Keprop. We just don't know how we can get there. Our lives might have you know, just taken a different turn. You want to advise them. Mm -hmm. Let yes. me actually uh, advise anybody really. Yes. Uh, you know, I may not really tell you that I had a very big, call at or a spectacular call I, yes. I saw a vision i saw what no 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 mm. i've actually found out that ministry is an overflow of a relationship with god yes really mm. if you are so committed to jesus mm. if you are so committed to the ways of god yes if god has filled you and is permeating in your heart yes definitely the overflow of a relationship with god mm. The overflow of our knowledge of God yes. will overflow out there in places of ministry. Yes. Like for example, you know, I I don't pre preach, I don't read the Bible to preach. Mm. But when I get, I read the Bible, mm. and I get an understanding of a scripture, yes. that thing illuminates me and excites me. Yes. And you know, I really would want now to share it out with someone else. Wow. So you realize you've done ministry. Wow. But it's an overflow of something. Wow. So uh, to anybody who really wants to come to ministry, you don't come to ministry, go to God. Yes. <laughs> you know? Yes, go to God. When you go to God, when you are, you know, in, in, in perfect in that relationship with God, yes. when you seek Him, when you get to want to know Him, yes. ministry becomes an overflow of that. Wow. So ministry is not, to me, ministry is a byproduct mm. of a relationship with God. Wow. Yes. Wow. But if you go for ministry, you will get disoriented. Wow. You things will come, power will come, money will come, fame will come. Mm. You'll be knocked out of balance, and wow. surely you will not survive. Wow. So ministry begins with a relationship with wow. God. Yes, profound. and that should be our maintenance all through. Wow. Mm. Profound. Can you just pray with our audience in line with what you've just mentioned, even yes. as you're bringing this to a close? Thank you, viewers, really. And um, let me just say, really, life is about our relationship with God. And um, please make it your ambition. Make it your ambition to know God. You know, Paul said, I want to know him and the power that raised him from the dead. And, and that is, should really be our ambition. And uh, if you are not born again, you can give your life to Christ. It's as simple as I just told you in my story. You can just give your life to Christ. And... Um, if you're wondering where to begin in serving God, begin by just being in love with God, being on fire for God, and that same fire 
will affect the people around you and that is how ministry will actually begin and grow so let's pray together our father and god i want to thank you for those people who have just watched and tuned in lord lord uh, our lives lord is just a testimony of the things you've done it's not our doing it's not our strength it's not our ability it's the things that you are doing in us lord in philippians 2 13 it's written, Lord, that you are at work in us, both to will and to do of your good pleasure. I pray, Lord, for my viewers, that, Lord, may you walk in their lives. Those who are giving their lives to you, those who are repenting and coming to you, Lord, you are at work in their lives. You are calling them to yourself. And so I pray, Father God, may you reveal your grace of salvation to them, those who are getting saved. And those, Lord, who are wondering where to begin in serving you, mm. I pray in the name of Jesus that they will have a close relationship with you. Mm. They will have a closer walk with you. You will open the eyes of their understanding. Mm. You will give them revelation of your word. Mm. You will fill them with your spirit, O oh God. Mm. For you say when your spirit comes on us, we shall become witnesses. Lord, it's all your work. It's all your doing. It's all your work within us. So I pray for them, Lord. May they have a close relationship with you. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The Lord bless you, Pastor Patrick, for finding time to come and share your life with our audience. Thank you so much, Brother Phil. Indeed, it has been a pleasure. Thank you. The Lord bless you. Thank you so much. And for you, our viewer, it was really a great pleasure to have your company. Until we meet again, the Lord bless you. <laughs>